Hi, I'm Scott Ashford with Oregon State University, and I was part of the advance team with GEAR performing a reconnaissance of the March 2011 Japan earthquake. This first set of films that we see here is from a water treatment facility outside of Kamizu, Japan. This water treatment facility uh, normally provides water for about 20,000 people, and it was put out of commission as a result of the earthquake. Here we see some utility tunnels underneath that treatment facility. Uh, the sections of the tunnels came apart as a result of liquefaction, uh, letting water and sand flow into the tunnels. Uh, they're having to physically remove that sand by shoveling it out. Uh, in addition to that, the offset between the different sections of tunnels uh, led to breaking of the pipelines and electrical facilities inside these tunnels. This is some film uh, around the water treatment facility, and you can see that as a result of liquefaction, the ground settled on the order of, of a meter to a meter and a half. And this movement uh, is what caused these sections of the utility tunnels to displace relative to each other, leading to their flooding and all the sand going inside the tunnel. This is the type of information we try to collect on these gear reconnaissance efforts. Uh, here we are measuring the amount of settlement around these pile-supported buildings. This is an example of an apartment complex uh, in Kamizu, Japan. All of this sand is a result of liquefaction, uh, water and sand boiling up out of the ground as a result of the strong shaking. The amount of sand that we saw uh, from this liquefaction is really, I mean, it's just incredible and, and, and had a tremendous impact on these people in this apartment complex. This is a shot outside of that apartment, apartment complex, and you can just see how soft, right, how loose that sand is uh, even after the earthquake. Uh, here, some of our team members are actually getting stuck in the sand, uh, trying to pull out of it. As we pan around, this area, uh, you'll be able to see sand boils or small, what we call sand vol volcanoes uh, all over the place. And these all are uh, erupting uh, out of the ground uh, after the earthquake. This is just an example again of how how loose that sand is that has been liquefied, and it really gives you a good idea how easy it is for some of these, uh, some of these buildings to settle a great deal that are founded on this type of material. Here's an example of a house in that same neighborhood that settled as a result of the liquefaction. You can see sand boils coming up all over this area, uh, leading to settlement of these houses, as well as apartment complexes and the utility poles. This is the port area of Kashima, Japan. So now in this area, the port was hit by liquefaction. You can see evidence uh, of the sand boils uh, all over the, the, uh, the asphalt. And then it was hit by a tsunami. So this is very common uh, type of damage we see resulting from liquefaction at port facilities where we get these voids and lateral movements of the key walls causing settlement of the inland areas. Uh, you also get sliding of the, uh, of the port toward the open water, uh, resulting in cracks in the asphalt. Um, here we're now seeing some of the tsunami damage. Uh, this is inside one of the port buildings. Uh, and it is really surreal going inside a building that has been filled with seawater and debris uh, from the tsunami. In this area, I think the tsunami was only two to three meters high. Uh, it damaged a lot of vehicles in the area, phone booths, fences, uh, just, just really a strange sight. Um, here we see that uh, these, are, these are all containerized uh, cargo containers. Um, that were just strung willy-nilly around the area as a result of the tsunami.
So now these are some examples of the type of perishable data we try to collect. Uh, this is a strong motion instrumentation uh, site in the background, those buildings that you can see. And this is documenting that liquefaction took place around that strong motion instrumentation site, critical for our follow-up analyses. Uh, here we have some levees that were damaged as a result of the strong shaking. Uh, what we want to see is if there's evidence of liquefaction or what caused these cracks. Uh, here's an old fishing pier. Again, we have lateral displacements as a result likely of liquefaction uh, in this area. The measurements from this landslide are another type of information that we try to collect on these gear investigations. Here what we're trying to do is document the amount of movement, the materials that slid, uh, so that we can go back and do follow-up research once they go ahead and, and clean up this road and make the repairs. These are just some examples of, uh, again, lateral movement of port facilities as a result of liquefaction. Uh, here in these athletic fields, you can just see sand boils resulting from liquefaction just all over the place. I mean, this is really overwhelming. Um, now, it's important for us as part of this gear reconnaissance to get there, to get there quickly um, because, you know, they try to clean these areas up really as quickly as they can. Uh, here's an example. Uh, while we were there, they were already repairing much of the work on the levees. Now, here's another example of the effects of liquefaction. This is a sewer line uh, that floated once the ground liquefied and actually popped up out of the ground. Uh, what this does then is, is cuts off all the sewer access to these people in the neighborhood. Uh, here you can see the manhole in the fo foreground actually popped up. Out of, popped up. There are windmills in the area, wind turbines, and if you look in the distance, you can see that they appear to be tilted. Uh, we took a closer look. You can see evidence of sand boils around these foundations. Uh, this wood turbine appeared to be fine, but the one in the distance is actually tilting a couple of degrees. What happened is the ground liquefied, the foundation lost lateral support, and it up, ended up moving over as a result of the earthquake. Uh, these are more examples of the effects of liquefaction. Uh, here you can see a park uh, filled with sand boils uh, from liquefaction. Now the liquefaction here in this park caused a lateral spread. Uh, you can see the offset of the ground in this picture, and that led ultimately to movement of this uh, key wall uh, along this river. Now here's the impact on homeowners. So individual homeowners are collecting the sand uh, and putting it in bags and then depositing it in these, in these common locations. You know, if you also look at their, the impact on homeowners, uh, here are sewer trucks. They're coming in to pump all the sand and sewer out of all the broken sewer pipes. Now this is a, uh, another strong motion instrumentation site adjacent to a bridge, uh, and what we see here is liquefaction, again, over the general area. Uh, we also observe some damage of this bridge. You can see the cracking in the abutment. Here's a town that was affected pretty much on their main street as, as uh, a result of liquefaction. Here's a shop that settled about a meter and a half into the ground. Um, and if you look in the distance, uh, you can actually see a water tower that appears to be tilting, but this is the end of our investigation. We're on our way to the Tokyo airport, uh, and we have to leave that for, for the next team.